Well, Phil is feeling filled with the feelings of being under the weather today. So Nick and I are the captain now. <laughs> Good luck, everyone else. Today's video is sponsored by me and the J2SenseMerch.com. Wait, that's not the site. Today's video is sponsored by me and my merch at J2Sense.com. We got our new spring lineup that just dropped and we got some new designs here in Size Matters available in white. So these are limited time offers. Once they're gone, they're gone. So if you want one, head over to J2Sense.com and get yours. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do our last follow-up piece regarding the uh, Chris Fix It Germany stuff going on regarding the cracked dyes and all that. I um, just wanna kind of start by saying the reason why these videos sometimes take some time to come out is because of the fact that there's videos that are already shot and have to go live on certain days because of obligations and things. So we put them out as soon as we possibly can, um, which in this one here has given his video some time to kind of simmer and whatnot. So a few things I want to talk about. There's a few quotes I want to take from my video as well as his to kind of give you guys some peace of mind when it comes to your 6000 series cards. No matter what, how good your intentions are, people will take what you say and twist it and try and use it against you. Both they did it to Chris and they're doing it to me. They do it to me all the time. I'm used to it. I'm, I'm fine with it. It comes with the territory. When it comes to the consumer, it's not okay to, you know, have consumers out there now super worried that their cards are gonna blow up, uh, which is unfortunately a byproduct of making a video of saying, hey, there's some concerns and stuff to talk about. But we're looking out for the consumer. That's our intent. It's what always, our intent's always gonna be. I'm just gonna put that out there. First and foremost, this, I was very clear in my video that it was not about like, hey, let's just all jump on AMD because AMD's a terrible company. That's not the case. I have I've rooted for AMD for years now, both with Ryzen and their GPUs. Um, in fact, I even had this to say in my video. I wanna preface this by saying this video is not another like, let's jump on AMD and say they're a terrible company. This is a heads up to you that might be running the 6000 series graphics cards that this could be a problem and there's some speculation as to what the problem is and some recommendations I have for you to kind of limit your exposure to this particular problem. I did talk to AMD. A AMD reached out after my video. We talked to them a bit. Um, he had some, they, they had some things to say regarding some speculations, some like, hey, we wanna know more as well. We're kind of waiting on some information. And that's what really led to Chris Fix's separate second video, um, which we were even told to look out for. Like, hey, we've been working with Chris. He's gonna be putting out another video. It wasn't, it wasn't AMD's findings, so they didn't wanna be like, hey, here's what we know, here's what's going on. It was a lot of like, hey, check out Chris's videos. He's been doing some in-depth testing um, and reaching out to customers for more information, and here's what he kind of found out. So I was kind of also told to like, hey, watch, wait and watch his video, which I've done, and I'm linking down below because you guys should go and watch it as well. It, he kind of addresses two different things. One, the driver um, stability issues, which have been mentioned, which is separate, te technically a separate branch of complaints people had regarding drivers, um, and then the uh, actual cracking die itself. And by the way, I wanna point something out real quick. This is kind of a side note. Um, I do have it in my notes to talk about later, but I'm gonna go ahead and just talk about it now. If, if there's anything that is actually tangible, that is easy to just go in and just find on your own, it's the amount of people complaining about the 22.11.2 driver causing all sorts of weird black screens, purple screens, yellow screens, crashing st instabilities, restarts, all sorts of weird stuff. And I told AMD on the phone, I said, hey, the cracking die thing, I understand. I understand that you're like, we don't know what's happening. We were trying to find out more information where they were actually being like, I guess even customers had denied sending their cracked cards to AMD for, um, to be looked at, which is I find incredibly odd because I would think they'd want to know. And it's because if you look more into Chris Fix's video, which I'll explain in a minute here, there's a reason why they don't want to send them in. Uh, I said, you cannot deny that people are complaining about driver stability issues on 22.11.2. And basically the response is, oh yeah, well, we, we do have an entirely new branch in that driver. So there is causing, causing a correlation, obviously, between the driver and stability issues and stuff. So if you're experiencing stability issues, I still stand by what I said, which is roll back one driver or wait for a new one before you update again. Because if they did make an entire branch change in the driver, that could obviously explain a lot of stabilities and crashes and stuff. I, I do like how there's an attempt to sort of like gloss over that in the conversation, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, anyway, moving forward, in terms of like, the, the weirdness regarding this was something that was also stated in my video. And here's what I said. Now, it's also very important to preface, this is one repair facility and this is one sample size of about 60-ish cards. So it's not very big. One of the things that's odd about the story is the fact that nobody else was talking about it. That nobody else was, and by nobody else, I mean repair facilities. There are tons 
and tons of electronics repair shops around the world that support all regions of consumers to repair pr products that are out of warranty. So it was always strange that there was only one facility talking about it. Now here is what Chris Fix's testing has kind of shown. And this, and this testing is not just what happens when he tries to run the cards. It's what happens when he tries to get more information because it's really about at that point deep diving to try and find out what's happening here. It started to look like all of these 48 cards with cracked dies were, were coming from the same source. And that source being a third party used sale. Uh, more than likely cryptocurrency cryptocurrency mined on cards that were stored improperly causing moisture to collect. And then these cards will get uh, used, turned on, turned hot, like the die will get hot and any moisture that's in the die, you know, they expand and that's what was breaking the die. That's a, that's a theory that Chris Fix has. It's not something he's been able to absolutely replicate or confirm. The hints that are leading him to believe that is the fact that all of the coolers are so clean. It's the fact that it's almost like all of the cards were taken apart, cleaned up, rethermal paste and all that sort of stuff. But whatever method he used, I say he, but whatever method they used, which is potentially the very same, the one seller that sold potentially a, a farm of cards out in the wild and they all sort of started breaking in the same manner, left too much moisture or residue or it got stored in a very moist place. It, I, I'm sorry, I'm saying the word moist. I know that triggers people. Moist. But it is winter time. It is a wet region out in Europe. That's the theory. And the theory is that they, nobody wants to send these cards into AMD to get inspected or repaired because of the fact that they were bought third party. They don't have their invoices to, um, you know, they're not even registered for warranty. There's no invoice. And if they were mined on or taken apart in such a manner that they weren't gonna get warranty and repaired or replaced anyway. So in my video, when I was like, is AMD gonna warranty these? There would be absolutely zero, like, There'd be zero reason for them to warranty these cards if they were treated in such a manner. So it's nice to know that based on the information that Chris has been able to so far kind of put together regarding just getting some information from the customers, um, that it's not a widespread problem, which would go back to why I was saying, why was nobody else talking about this? Because if it was a regional based cryptocurrency mining farm or whatever that offloaded a bunch of their cards because of the decline in cryptocurrency profitability, then it would make sense if they used the same cleaning method on all of their cards and it was a bad method that caused this problem, why it's such a localized yet like a focused problem and a, and a high density of, of the certain amount of cards they received in. Because what I thought was strange was the fact that like were none of these cards ever working from day one? Um, and what Chris Fix was saying was in talking with the customers, they all worked anywhere from a few minutes to a few hours before they broke. It kind of goes along with the theory that they got too hot, they were too damp and that caused a problem. When we do liquid nitrogen cooling stuff, they freeze over and they get very wet. Uh, but also too, uh, it's we never heated them up to like a normal gaming temperature under load with all that moisture. We always cooled them up or warmed them up to just below zero so they, stay, they stayed ice and then would take it off power, take it off, clean it with alcohol and just completely dry out the card in a drying mechanism before we would even use them again. So it'd be something we could probably test to recreate but I don't wanna blow up a perfectly good card just to recreate that situation when it's starting to look like that could be the case. There was a lot of, there was a lot of people out there saying that I was like fear mongering the driver. Um, and I mean, which I, I don't, I guess I can understand people taking things people say out of context, but not when I said this. And this is where I myself become a little bit confused as to how a driver update could cause this because typically drivers don't, don't change a major function of the mechanical aspect of the car. And by mechanical, I mean the electric current going through it. Drivers typically just tell the card how to handle different APIs, how to handle certain you know, engine upgrades when it comes to shaders and stuff in games and whatnot. It doesn't physically change anything with the card's voltages and stuff. That would be specifically with a firmware. So this is kind of the, ter I guess the problem that comes with the territory of trying to, I guess, give people some sort of I don't wanna say advice, but some sort of recommendations when you're being asked for recommendations of, hey, did you see Chris's video? What do you recommend we do? And then you respond and then people get mad saying, oh, you're just causing fear mongering and stuff. Um, obviously that wasn't, that wasn't the tone of that video. I think most people understood that. And for those people, I'm very grateful, but it looks like your 6,000 series graphics cards are with the exception of driver instability problems, which are not a, an illusion, they are real. 
um, in terms of stability problems. But what you can find plenty of are people talking about instability and crashing and black screens on their 6000 series graphics cards with the most recent driver. Even if they're still working after a restart or whatever, they are there. It is all over Reddit. It is all over the forums, any forum you go to, specifically about PC enthusiasts. The 6000 series graphics cards and the latest driver definitely have a problem at the very minimum of creating stability issues. Your 6000 series cards are gonna be fine. And this is one of those things that's just tough because you know, when you've got as many people following you, you want to try and keep them as safe as possible and give them information, but there's also a level of responsibility there and to not cause mass panic. And obviously with that video, mass panic was never the intent, like defaming or whatever, AMD was never the intent. Like I said, I talked with them behind the scenes. Um, everyone was just as dumbfounded as the next guy on what was happening here, but it's, it's nice to see now that a few weeks have gone by with this problem not popping up anywhere else, which really looks like a localized issue. When it comes to AMD uh, graphics, Phil, or Phil, Nick is still running a uh, 6800 XT in his system. It has been solid as can be, never had any issues. He's even updated to the latest drivers and he's not personally having any issues. The branching of the new driver, there's so many different combinations of hardware out there and versions of Windows and updates and different update states and progresses with some updates applied, maybe others not applied. There's, it's just really hard to iron out those types of problems and there's always going to be driver conflicts somewhere in someone's system if you think about the amount of combinations that are possible. So that's not that odd. But I'm telling you right now, in terms of recommendations, we've always recommended the 6000 series um, graphics cards as being you know, powerful and worth the money, especially when compared to Nvidia. And the same is said for the 7000 series graphics cards if you are shopping right now at that price point, they're just so dang expensive. But anyway, I highly recommend go and watch Chris Fix's video. It's linked down in the description below. Um, he has kind of several parts to it. He shows the testing methodology, which cards he tested, the driver versioning making, and the firmware versioning. And he even goes on to say, just like I said, you know, updating the driver does not update the BIOS. It does not update the firmware. It could not cause voltage problems through a driver update, um, which is something I had even said in my own video. So I'm glad to see that this is not something that I think people really need to worry about. It just sounds like whoever bought their graphics cards from this particular buyer or seller, um, unfortunately are out money because of either one, a cleaning mistake or two known bad cards that this person tried to cover up, which is the unfortunate downside and risk you take when you buy from the used market. Unfortunately, the used market is extremely in incentivizing and enticing because of the pricing of graphics cards, people are looking for a deal wherever they can. Unfortunately, um, this is the kind of thing that someone would probably never have known was even potentially a problem uh, ahead of time. I, it's not like I'm gonna say my new recommendation is when you buy a used graphics card, go and dry the card out for five days in a dehumidifier or something, because that's not something anyone should ever have to think about. It's, it's just a very localized, unfortunate situation that took place, whether intentional or non-intentional, um, with a certain group of buyers that unfortunately, if you combine how much the graphics cards probably cost across all of those 48 people, that's a lot of money that someone now has in their pocket and no one has any graphics cards to really show for it. And again, that's only the ones that have so far have popped. Who knows how many of this cryptocurrency farm seller could have sold. So if you bought a used 6800 or 6900 from that region somewhere out there and your card is acting weird, um, good luck. I'm not giving any recommendations though, because apparently when I do, I get myself in trouble. But anyway, that's the last time we're gonna talk about this. And you know what? I don't wanna talk about any tech news anymore. I just wanna get back to building computers. I just wanna get back to the shenanigans and being the tech grandpa at this point, I guess, cause I'm the oldest looking one of the group and I'm fine with that. And the glasses didn't help either.